uh, live stream. This is a stream where we talk to um, professionals in the tech industry, extracting key learnings that can help you guide your own tech career journey. And today I have the pleasure of chatting with uh, Jasmine Hoen, <clears throat> a passionate community builder and advocate for women entrepreneurs. As a programs and community architect <clears throat> and digital undivided, Jasmine spearheads strategic initiatives to fuel the growth for Black and Latina female founders. With over six years of experience founding startups and empowering innovators, Jasmine brings a creative lens from her background as a professional dancer. Um, our work has gained widespread recognition, including a 2023 Woman Entrepreneur of the Year nomination. Um, in this episode, Jasmine will share insights from her career supporting women entrepreneurs, building community, and driving social impact. I'm so excited to learn from Jasmine's experience um, as an advocate, community builder, and change, change agent. How does that sound? Oh, <laughs> you just went in. I'm like, wow, <laughs> is that me? Okay, yeah. Yeah, it's really, really amazing and great to have you on the on the stream today. Um, and I usually started out at the very, very beginning, right? I know okay. that you've you've done you know a lot of founding work. You you now work in a, um, in a, at a nonprofit supporting uh, women entrepreneurs, and you know all of that good experience. What inspired you to start all of that? Oh, that's a really long. I have a long response. Okay, so thank you for having me. I appreciate being here. Thank you so much, Dawn. So yeah, I will say first my faith. Okay, my faith in the Lord fueled all of this because I had absolutely really no direction to my environment, influence from the community around me, the environment of people seeing them thrive, was just igniting me with so much passion and excitement. And then three, just that, that, that internal, come on girl, what we doing? Like, I gotta get it. Like that is just in me. And with all those three things combined, oh, and then the fourth, of course I can't forget my husband. Yes, he's around my environment, but my husband as well. I've seen him just thrive in his career, in his personal life. And he just continues to empower me with so much that, all of those things combined, people, spaces, kind of got me where I am today. That's so interesting. I, I remember when I met uh, met bo both of you, um, there was something he said where I'm like, you know, I'm inspired by a journey and I would like to learn more, come on the stream. It's like, you've got story for days, right? That was his exact response. And I wonder like how much, you know, more fulfilling is that journey or has it been for you kind of like working, being with someone who's also figuring out their own journey at the same time. So it's like growing together in the real sense. How has that been in your experience? It's encouraging. It lets you know that you are not alone, that it is okay. And really nobody knows what the heck they're doing. I don't care if they are 20 years in their career, two days in, two years, everybody is just doing the best they can with what they have. And then next steps are being figured out along the way. You take a right step, then you're like, all right, left step, right, left. Like that is the journey. And having my husband a part of the journey with me, not only has his encouragement, you know, been a huge pusher in my growth, his career has actually afforded me opportunities to be in spaces and rooms. And my background, I majored in dance, you know, and I had business acumen, but didn't know how to cultivate it and where to cultivate it. And he just continued to invest in what he saw in me and continues to do that. And it's opened up so many opportunities, whether it's been relationship building, relationship building to get opportunities, speaking opportunities, conference opportunities on my own or with the company. I am fortunate to have a partner that believes in me sometimes even more than I believe in myself. And more than anything, he believes that God's hand is on me and continues to pray for me. And that is the best gift that I could ever have. So how did you go from dance 
to tech? What 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 was that journey like? Okay, all right, <laughs> get your popcorn. Okay, no. so <clears throat> I will I will give you some details, but I won't go forever because it's a story. Okay, so I was in LA dancing professionally, training professionally. I'm training now. At this time, I was newly married. It's 2018, early 2018. My husband just transitioned, like he just made the big transition from Texas to Silicon Valley. We're newly married. Our mindset is, okay, you're going to be in the in the Bay. I'm going to be in the South, in, in Southern California. We're going to both follow our dreams, meet up consistently, and then do this, right? And very quickly in the journey in LA, God said to me, dance is your gift. It's not your calling. That's a whole mm. story. But he said, it is your gift, not your calling. And the thing is, I, at the time felt like this is the only thing that I can do. This is what I know I am known for. At, uh, before that, I was a teacher with Teach for America. I was very successful in my tenure for my two years with Teach for America. And I began to really see, I understand strategy. I understand how to build communities. I understand people. And if you understand people, you can do a lot. You can do a lot. And if you know how to communicate, you can do even more with that. And I knew both very well. And I also knew how to execute, not only just cast a vision, but execute and execute it well. And when something's so common to you, you don't actually realize that it is a gift. You think that everybody can do that. What's the point of having an idea and not putting it into execution? Like, what's the point? But I didn't realize that until I left Teach for America and I finished my two years at my school in Houston. There were Houston, shout out to Peace. Woo. And after I finished, we married and moved to the Bay. I'm in LA, he's in the Bay, right? God says, gift not calling. So now I'm back in the Bay and I'm like, what am I doing with my life? What am I literally doing? And my husband is telling me, take your time. You don't need to jump into the next thing. Just figure out what you want to do. I don't want you jumping into the next thing. I try a little bit of commercial real estate in the Bay. I work there two months. No, it doesn't work. No work. It does not work out. I become a director uh, as a performing arts director with the Boys and Girls Club. I'm doing a lot there. Then God says, mm, yeah, you're going to start a nonprofit. I'm like, what? What is that? What is even that? And as I started this nonprofit in San Francisco or in the, yeah, I started in San Francisco, the Bay Area, just in general. Very quickly, I started it with the organization that I was working at originally just as a pilot program. Within mm. seven weeks, we had a partnership with Finish Line, and I was gearing up for the next season. As I'm gearing wow. up for it, if you haven't followed the theme of my story, I listen to the Lord in all things, all things, all things. So I feel very led to leave my job. God gave me a lot of confirmation. That's a whole different story too. But you can ask me more questions about it and then I can go into it if you want. Yeah. But he gave me confirmation very clearly. And well, the biggest one was if I will, I'm going to be in alignment with my husband. If he's like, this is not the time to leave. We're in the Bay. It's expensive. We're not doing it right now. Mm. But I came home, casted the vision and he was like, all right, we're going to have to make some adjustments, but uh, we're going to do this. And I built a small team. And it grew. It grew from seven as a pilot program to over 400 women we were impacting. And wow. we were doing a therapy for free, doing these healing rooms, having women encounter uh, God in a really authentic way while also growing community with these women from all over different states I would have never visited. We're getting testimonials. And we moved back to Dallas because of the pandemic. And when we moved back... I am in this space now of being seen what I didn't know as I was being seen by my peers as somebody who was an authority in the space of executing purpose driven businesses. So mm. whether it was profits or for profits, if it had a mission to impact the world in a massive way, I believe all businesses should do that is I was being seen as an authority for advice as consulting or as a coach. And then I started a consulting business off of the advice of another friend who was doing stuff in the Airbnb space. And then I grew that. Some media attention here, a little bit here. And then I got to the space of, I have been doing this entrepreneur thing. I've been really enjoying it, but what is next? And then I just feel very led. I feel the Lord whisper to me, do you trust me enough to build someone else's vision? And I said, mm. I do. God, I have too much history with you. You've taken me this far. I do. And at this point from my career, from college until this point, it has been unconventional 
no actual traditional training, but the school of life has taught me from conferences to coaches, paying for top tier advice, getting in the room, joining the boards, being at the table. I was just a sponge and continue to be such that an opportunity opened up for me at Digital Undivided. And uh, Brittany Hell opened up a really great opportunity for me, advocated for me, opened up a position based off of my social proof of what I've done in my own personal businesses and endeavors, and really something focusing on strategy and community growth. And that is what I've been able to do. Sadly, <clears throat> that's something that recently just happened. Sadly, we were all laid off the company. Everyone was just laid off recently in January, but I am a free agent. So I am a free agent to continue to do things in tech because what I was doing there was helping women in tech specifically mm. in digital spaces grow their businesses. And I was helping them find investors, mentor matching, growth, uh, being at events and acting as a spokesperson for our programs, being at different industry events and acting as a liaison for what we could do. And it was just massive with the impact. And that really began to Silicon Valley living in the Bay grew this, the seed was planted about tech and what the impact it can have in the world. And that the industry is, tech is in every business, is in every industry. And what can I do in tech with my background and skill set? I saw that happen with Digital Undivided. And I'm like, I need to do that. I need to keep doing this. Um, way beyond my own endeavors. I want to stay attached to other people's ideas and visions to expand things in the world. So <clears throat> there is a lot to unpack there. Thanks for sharing that. And uh, I'm really sorry that your role was impacted, but given your experience and your background, I'm sure that you're going to bounce back even stronger. Um, yeah. But one of the things I really wanted to touch <clears throat> on which is really crucial. In fact, it's the reason why we're having this chat right now is one of the biggest things that I've seen. You know, if you look at the wealth statistics in America, you know, we as Black people lag in a big way in that, in that regard. And yeah. I've seen over and over again, I was at Afrotech, you know, just this mm -hmm. past uh, time. And I'm on the streets asking people, how did you, how much did you make before? You know, people went from making $15 an hour to $95,000 in their first role in tech. And I'm like, this story is the same. It's almost like it's cliche. I'm asking the same question and getting the same responses. So, and that's why for me, like even, I mean, your story is so inspiring and I definitely want to like double click and, and dive deeper because I think for a lot of the people who watch and listen to me, your story is going to resonate in a, in a special way because, you know, you've basically made this journey yourself. It's not like you've had some kind of like guided ways. Of course, you've probably had people, community around you that has helped you, but it's mostly been your journey. You've taken yeah. that uh, responsibility. You've taken that initiative and gone for it. So I'm, I'm really excited about that. So um, in, in your founding journey, Talk, talk, talk to me about that because that's one piece of tech also that I don't talk about much, mm -hmm. but it's also so important, right? It's that, of course, the easiest way to get that bag in tech is basically go get that job. But there's this other mm -hmm. side, which is like creating out of nothing, right? And it's tough because with a job, it's, it's hard, but it's easy in the same sense because yeah. you, build, you get the skill, you build that resume, mm -hmm. you build that LinkedIn. There's a format. In yeah. entrepreneurship, there isn't. It could, you could do it a million different ways. So how was that journey for you as an entrepreneur building from the ground up, basically creating something out of nothing? Out of nothing, exactly what you said, out of nothing, out of no one being, con out of outside of the people who know you and see it, the thing, you have to go out of your safe space and at, tell other people to see the same thing, the same way that the people who believe in you do. And that begins to sharpen and cut your teeth in ways that I, no, nothing else can, which is why I believe everybody, specifically every everybody, but every woman, every woman needs to build something outside of herself. Businesses mm -hmm. solve problems. And when women get into spaces, what do they do? Solve problems. Often women are put in rooms to solve problems, whether it is to care for a home or it is to care for a company 
or it is to provide leadership. And if we take it even on a bigger scale, more high level, people are put in places to solve problems. And it is very important that as a person, you never rely on a company to be your sole access of growth. You need to be the initiator of your growth and you need to find spaces that are having a consistent problem that bothers you in a very unique way. All you have to do is find a tiny solution, activate it, do it a few more times, refine it, and begin to package it and sell it. Mm. And as you do that over and over and over, your confidence grows as a salesperson. Everybody is a salesperson. When I hear people say, um, I'm not I'm not a sell, I'm not, I don't really like sales. You sell yourself all the time. That's why we have social media. That's why we have LinkedIn. That's why you got dressed today. That's why you took a shower. That's why you brushed your teeth. Everybody wants to sell a version of themselves or sell something about themselves. But when you begin to actively do it and be intentional about it, then you begin to cultivate it as a skill. And then from there, you begin to build on that as a communicator, as an executor, as somebody that's agile. Being a founder will teach you how to be multifaceted in ways that nothing else can. And I'm not even saying it has to be you found a company, take it to scale all the way, growth stage, and you're going and you're pit. It doesn't have to be all of that. Even if you're just looking to make an extra $5,000, an extra $10,000 annually, something that you can do, package and sell, right? Or a product, something that you can actually make money for that you're passionate about outside of your day to day is is crucial. I think even in this economy, it's crucial to create your own opportunities. Because mm -hmm. one day I had the epiphany. I was sitting down, I was on social media, and I was like, man, actually, I have the exact, I have the exact moment it happened. It was my bachelor at weekend, hiking up Runyon. We're hiking. Woo! And I'm I'm the one that loves to ask those questions that people are like, dang, let me think on that. So I that's what I'm asking. I'm like, y'all. If failure was never an option, like it was just not even in your mind, what is what would y'all want to do? People start saying, start a beauty supply store. I would want to start a company. I want to write a book. I would just want to do like all these things are coming out. And I said, why can't we do those things? Mm. And it's like, well, because and then the excuses come. Right. And I thought about it. This is this is silly, but I love beauty, fashion, all that. And I thought about Jackie Ina. And I said, who told Jackie Ina that she was his popular beauty influencer on you? I mean, entrepreneur, all the things, Nigerian woman, all these things. And I'm like, who told her that she that she was qualified to open her camera and start telling us how to do our makeup? Who literally told this woman, you're going to tell people how to do their makeup? Nobody. She just said, I'm her. I can do that. I have that gift. I'm good at it. And I, nobody has my sauce. I'm going to do it the way I know how to do it. And she began to do it out of passion. And then the profit followed. I'm not mm -hmm. saying just waste the dollar. You do things that you are genuinely passionate about and the profit will follow. But do it in excellence. Keep doing it. Learn something new about it every single day. At least one hour. Become an expert in it. And something I know I'm an expert in is connecting. I'm an expert in connecting communities. All the execution, I can do that with my eyes closed. But I'm an expert in connecting. And I know how to do that very well. And being a starter, a founder really taught me that. That is so cool. Like you unlock, it's so funny. A lot of the things that you're talking about in that, in that last answer is covering even many of the journeys that I'm on personally. And I've mm -hmm. been talking to my friends about recently. You know, people talk about imposter syndrome so much. Uh, like it's a bad thing, but we're all imposters, right? The, yeah. Before you, if you say you want to become a YouTuber, you've never been a YouTuber. So you're an imposter. So yeah. you're working every day to overcome that. But the journey to not be an imposter is true taking the journey. You, yeah. If you like, you can take, because uh, think about it. Even if you go learn something, if you go learn to be a doctor, you have to go do something for example, like, is it housemanship or it's called something yeah. here where even after learning, you still have to be an imposter before you become the thing. You don't go from learning to being a doctor. If you go be a computer science uh, student at a college, yeah. you have to go through graduate trainee. So mm -hmm. even after you've learned the thing, 
which are things that can be learned. You still have to do the doing before you become. And even when you become, you start off as junior. So you still start off at under before one day they can call you the master. Yeah. The challenge is not every path, especially not entrepreneurship, has a school, has a trainee program, and then has a leveling up scale where you say, okay, now I'm that person. And the challenge is we're willing to bet into programs that will handle us to that journey that we get the same result of everybody else, but not willing to bet into the things that we can't see the start from the beginning. Right. The thing is, I love that you're saying that. I, I, okay, this is, this is what I'm thinking. This is what I'm thinking right now is that when we're talking about, okay, you're starting something new, you've never seen the blueprint for it. Every, but here's the thing. I don't even know if I would call it imposter, that everybody's an imposter, but I think I would say that before you begin, I always say, build your stage before the audience is there. Uh, Meaning you've been doing that. The reason why Jackie felt comfortable enough to tell people how to do their makeup like that, she been doing that. She was doing that by herself on her own over and over and over. The moment that somebody actually, uh, you're even talking about when it comes to coding or uh, like a hard skill like coding or something, project management. Before you became a project manager and you were taking people from point A to point D or point C to F, you were already, I bet, in your friend group, the one planning the group, the group hangouts. Yes. You were the one in your family saying, okay, we're going to do this. And, and everybody saw you as that, which is why it fell into your lap. And now you actually have a formal role where it has a step, a blueprint for you, but you're really doing the same thing you've always done. It just now has an actual title. It has an That's actual true. blueprint, which should be easier to fall into, honestly. That's true. So um, networking is one part that's so important in tech. You're a network builder. How did you start out? First of all, understanding that that was a skill and a superpower. And how have you leaned into that? And what kind of results have you gotten as a result of building your network? Oh, my gosh. So many. Every opportunity I have gotten has been from a connection. It has never been that I applied and someone was like seeing me as a number. No, somebody personally said, I got you, Jasmine. I will connect you. Oh, that's my, oh, that's, don't even worry about that. I know the CEO. Oh, don't even worry. I'll, I'll put us in a, a group thread. Like it's always been also because I'm not afraid to dream out loud. I have no problem dreaming out loud. I speak about what I want in spaces that people would often say, "It has. I don't have it uh, pitched perfectly. I don't really know how it's going to happen. I know what I want. I know how to communicate what I want. I may not always know how to get there, but I know what I need to get there. To get there. Hmm. So I often go into spaces being just my authentic self, okay? My full authentic self. And the moment I realized that was when we lived in the Bay. Because when we lived in the Bay, every, this is pre-COVID, okay? Pre-COVID Silicon Valley, black tech Silicon Valley, right? Was, there's events <clears throat> all the time. I mean, Monday through Friday, even some on Saturday, there was always a tech event. And my husband, he was like, we're going to all of them. And I'm like, oh my God, no, please. Ah, I'm so nervous. And I would tell him, I don't know how to talk to these people. Like, I don't even know what to talk about. He's like, just talk. You're like, interesting. I'm like, but what do I talk about? And began, I began seeing that connecting with people you don't know. I don't like to even really call it networking. I know that's the traditional thing. But I just think when you're authentically building relationships, you can connect on anything. I can like your shoes and that can start the conversation. Okay. It could be that we're at the same table grabbing food and we're hungry and that can start the conversation. If my motive is to really connect with people and see people as a human and not a transaction, then I will always be okay to connect with people. I know how to do that. And when I tweet, when I tweak my mind from, I don't know how to connect with them. I was thinking that I don't have the hard skill of being a coder or developer. Dev color has a lot of events as well. And I was like, I'm not a developer. And Ricky's like, you're a person, just talk. And I saw how he would jump in the conversation. And the thing about it, this is what I told my uh, younger cousins. You guys, here's the, the thing about life. Nobody knows what they're doing. And everybody is just a little bit nervous if they're honest. 
Everybody is just a little bit nervous when they go into those networking events. Everyone feels a little bit something like, oh, like that's why they have an open bar. They try to please people so they can talk. They try to give them liquid courage. <laughs> and when you realize that everybody kind of feels this unanimous nerve, then it's okay. I'm not, I will then be my normal self and be at ease instead of feeling like I need to put a mask on and be somebody else. And when I began to understand that, it took off. The connections have afforded me to get at uh, one of the best mentors I've ever had. Also, being at events and getting jobs, you know, getting uh, opportunities on the media, it has opened up so many opportunities in my life. And even just meeting new friends, like literally just meeting new dope people who are like minded, has come out of being on my authentic self in these networking spaces that are often just a few words. Hey, let's connect on LinkedIn. I'm not doing that. Like we will connect on LinkedIn. Yes. But why are you here? <laughs> why are you here tonight? What is your goal? Oh, no one has asked me that. Oh, girl, I like your jacket. Where'd you get that? I'm going to be my authentic self. And I, that has been the greatest hack in my life. So people, if you take nothing away, take this three away from uh, Jasmine's response. Get a husband who inspires you to go to all these events. <laughs> <laughs> comment, uh, build genuine connections, connect some co comments on people's shoes and jackets. <laughs> <laughs> and connect a real person first before you go to LinkedIn. <laughs> yes. Let me tell, oh, this is a hack as well. Okay, this is a this is a networking thing that I do. I used to do it a lot when I would tra uh, travel from Dallas to Atlanta a lot uh, because you forget a lot of people that you're meeting. But it's always hard to forget the person you took a picture with. So uh, say that you are talking to somebody and the conversation is really like separate. It, it looks completely different than the other conversations you had for the evening. And to capture the evening, you say, I really love this connection. I, I, love, I love everything about what we've been talking about. Let's take a picture. I want to send it to you. I love that how we, our connection is meant. You take the picture. When you're following up, you send them that picture as well. It was great connecting with you. Oh, look how great we look. I hope, uh, you know, great success in your future. That way, it is always hard to forget the person you took a picture with. It is always hard to forget a conversation that was lasting enough that you even wanted to agree to take a picture. I've actually realized that in many situations, uh, especially at those kind of things, because there, the, many of these moments you would never get to recreate again, ever. Mm -hmm. Some of these people would never meet them in real life again. Yeah. So it's just so important to capture that moment in time in history. Yes. That so, so powerful, but that's definitely the, another hack. See, I told you on this stream, you're always going to get gems. You're going to see a lot of secrets that you probably wouldn't even find in an NBA. Okay. Maybe I'm <laughs> taking it a little too far, <laughs> but, <laughs> but like subscribe and share this stream with your friends. Don't, be selfish. Don't take all this goodies away by yourself. Let's get more people in the community so we can all learn together. Um, so for those aspiring to kind of like be a connector, be a programs architect like you are, what are some of the skills aside from networking? Let's say we'll pick three skills that you think are really crucial for success in this role. Okay. You need to be great. This is something that is just, I know a lot of people are afraid to do this, but you need to be great at public speaking. It is a skill to be able to present. I present any chance I get. I literally have a professional portfolio. If anybody gives me the access to share a screen, I am presenting my entire career to them in about five minutes. I And I will always present. I have things just in my arsenal to just present. You need to practice communicating publicly. So public speaking is a great skill to have, as well as being agile. Like you need to understand what it means to be agile. So whether that is um, not even the methodology of it, being agile, but the, the act in the art of being flexible, that whenever a project pivots, that you are flexible with your skill set, as well as mindset to adjust to the pivot. And then the third thing that I would say is that you are a strategist, that you can hear somebody who is big vision, big picture. I happen to be that kind of person that is very big picture. I can cast vision all day, get people invested, woo, woo, woo. And I have had to learn the skill 
of being a strategist, how to get theirs. And honestly, what taught me that was Teach for America because they would always use the term work backwards. So at the end of the year, you want the kids to learn how to read. You want, I taught kindergarten and then I became the founding dance teacher, built that program. And what you would want is you would think of the goal you want the kids to accomplish at the end of the year. You want them to be performance ready or you want them to read. You want them to write. OK, these are really big skills. And we have what, how many eight months or so to get accomplish this. Now I need to work backwards. The big picture is here. Now let's walk it back. What needs to happen? They need to learn letter sounds. They need to learn phonemes. They need to learn um, how to add, how to subtract. They need to learn these little things in between. And then it helped me become a strategist in A to D. And the reason why I'm not going all the way to Z is because there's still an end point. And if you understand in the specific, specifically the career as, as program management or community builder and being a community management is... It is not a goal and it's not realistic that you can be a part of everyone's journey from A to Z, that I can see the fruit of everything. I can't. I'm here just for a tiny bit, but I'm going to execute in the pocket of A to D, right? And I'm going to stay in that. And I know that. I'm an expert at that. I'm not, I'm not an expert at that. That's when you go to the other accelerator. You go to the other organization, the other business. You go to those things. But in this pocket, as this kind of program manager or community manager, I can get you here. So it's understanding your skill set. First of all, being a great public speaker, a strategist, and being flexible and agile. That is so powerful, especially that last bit. I thought the second one was the most powerful, but then this last bit is even more powerful because I think even, you know, if we dial back a little bit to what you were talking about earlier with people and vision, is that oftentimes, and it's great, we all dream big, but what scares people is the scale of that dream. So let's say you want to build uh, a beauty supply line that's maybe mm -hmm. as big as what Rihanna is doing. Right. Maybe you can, maybe you can. You're never going to know. But people are not able to compartmentalize to say, there was something I was watching about music, which is interesting. Somebody was saying the perfect music career <clears throat> or promotion starts from in in uh, in Nigeria, security people are called gate men. Mm -hmm. So it's like this guy, when he came on the podcast, said his gate man knew his music. Then everybody on the street, then everybody in the city, then everybody in the state before everybody in the country and now all over the world are learning about his music. Mm -hmm. It's like you're almost never going to succeed as, a, as an artist if your goal is, oh, I want global success when you don't even have that's Local what I'm success. That's what I'm saying is that people say stuff, but like, okay, it makes. I just said this actually to my nail lady, huh? but I just said, okay, it is so crazy to me when people say things like, as a leader, when someone says, "I'm a great leader," and you look at how they're leading, maybe an organization or a team, but I'm not really concerned about that. Tell me how you are with your family and your kids. Because if you can't lead them, there is no way that you're going to be able to lead all of us. Uh. Right. And so you what I'm saying, essentially making it plain is that what you're saying is focus on the thing in front of you, the thing that is in front of you. Excel at that. Get great at that. Become skilled at that and then multiply and then multiply, and then multiply. And then before you know it, when I say build your stage before your audience is there, you already were on the stage. Yep. Now the audience just came and the tickets are there. And then you're like, oh, I'm just doing what I've always been doing. You don't then, you're not an imposter. You don't feel like an imposter because you put the 10,000 hours in. You were already doing it that when the people are there, you just, it's like putting on shoes. You're like, I'm just doing what I do. A, a thousand percent. And it's confirmed now the work of the word of this week is work back. I had a guest on on Wednesday. It said the same exact thing. I, I picture where I want to be and then I just break it down. Break it it's down. so powerful because one, you can fail if you don't have vision, but if you also don't have the tactical ability or the strategic vision to be able to see it from start to finish. And that's the thing too, is like people look from start to finish, but sometimes Working from finish to start is also great because it's like, okay, I this is step 10, then I work nine and eight and then one. So it's like, okay, if this is one, I don't care about nine to two to 10. 
Yeah. Can I even get one done? And then you go do two, then go do three. Because you might not even have resources that you need to do step four. But I remember like this story from like when I was young, where there was somebody who needed something and like they had to do like exchanges to get everything they wanted. Mm -hmm. So they trade two, two cookies for two jars of milk and for yeah. this and that. The thing that you need for step seven is going to come in step five. <laughs> but if you don't even do step one, you're never going to get to step five. <laughs> he gives seed to the sower. He gives That's seed true. to the sower. So you got to be a sower first. You got to be a <laughs> Hallelujah. You got to be a sower first, which means when you get, oh, this is, oh my gosh, before people were even asking me to speak at conferences, before people were even asking me to share a workshop for an organization, before those things even happened, I remember I was sitting in the bed sad because God said, dance is your gift, not your calling. And I said, what on earth am I supposed to do? This is all I know how to do. And then my husband, he turned to me, Ricky, he said, babe, you're sad, but you know how to do so many things. I was like, what? All I know how to do is dance. And he's like, no, you don't. When you talk, people listen. And I was like, oh, yeah, that, that, is, that has been a thing in my life. And then I said, okay, what I need? I need a camera. I need a tripod. I need, And I start saying what I need as a list. He said, no, you don't. If you want to talk, all you need is your phone. And he said, and that's all you need because your phone is an actual camera. And if you're consistent enough with that, this is what I have, right? See to the sower, this is what I have. He said, if you have an excuse that you need all these things, it'll always be excuses for why you cannot do it. Start with what you have and then the rest will follow. Okay, then we'll, then we'll go and get the other stuff. I began doing these videos, these thankful Thursdays. I started just talking online, just saying different things. And then people started reaching out. Hey, I'm doing this. Hey, I'm doing that. Hey, I'm doing this. And I was like, whoa. Wow. And I, the crazy thing is I was just working with what I had. Mm -hmm. And then the steps started to, they started to be laid out. And it was just me focusing on what was in front of me at that time. That's so powerful. That's really so powerful. Uh, <clears throat> so have you, um, one of the things that I care a lot and I've kind of like, I heard like mixed review some people like it some people don't but what do you think is the impact of whether it's courses certifications or things like that and maybe helping you lean <clears throat> into some of the learnings that you maybe already know intrinsically but just helping you put thoughts to that is that something that you experience in your own journey yes i don't even know why somebody would be against that that doesn't even make sense do you like to learn do you like to read do <laughs> what there's nothing negative that comes out of sharpening something you already know a little bit about mm. you know what i'm saying there's nothing yep. bad that comes out of showing even people when you're looking in the market and you're looking for a job it shows the people uh employers that are looking to hire you, that you are consistently interested in learning more about this skill for this kind of role, that you have a growth mindset to keep learning what the industry is saying, industry trends. Even when you're looking at job qualifications, I'm doing that now, recent layoff, free agent, hire me, is that whenever you are looking at qualifications, they will often say, do you understand industry trends? I needs to identify industry trends that only comes from be by being in the industry over and over certifications mm -hmm. conferences being in the room reading the books there's nothing bad that comes out of knowledge mm. that yeah that's it 100 percent. so what's um we got I, I think about three more questions and then typically we would go to um our live q a like subscribe share the stream Let's get more people into the community. We're always bringing that fire every single week. Um, and by the way, I wanted to come in, Jasmine. You and your husband are such great storytellers. Like, I can oh. listen to you both every single day. It's so natural. <laughs> it's really great. Um, Thank you. So in your career journey so far, if there was one thing you can go back and redo or do a different way, what would that be? I would just slow down. 
I would just be present and still in the moments. I really don't have anything that I could say, honestly, like I wouldn't do that. Everything has worked together and has been so good for me. And I'm so thankful to God for that. And there was a season I remember specifically despising the stillness, despising that it was time to be developed, like hating. Why do I, why is it already not happening for me? And I heard a whisper. It was the Lord. He said, don't despise these moments. We live in, in the big parts of life is not the graduations. It's not the weddings. It's not the baby. It is the mundane acts of life that we live out. Mm. And when you miss the moments of the one degree, I heard it like this, is that as a plane is in the air and it's flying, if they get off just one degree, they can be in a completely different location than they need to be. And it can go off of possibly taking it out of auto control, off going to sleep, not being present. And that one degree is so crucial. And if you miss that one degree, if you miss those small little moments, you will get off course of what the where you need to actually be, the actual location you need to be at. And then in those moments when you're not seeing the growth as fast as you like, the people are not grabbing the job application as fast. People are not seeking you at the conferences or asking you to speak at different things. Don't despise any of that. Mm. How are you when you wait? You want to learn how to wait well. And I had to mm. learn how to wait well. That is something that I would tell my younger self in my 20s. Girl, it's going to happen. Girl, calm down and take a nap. Eat a snack and relax. It's going to happen. You're putting in the work. You're trusting God with the journey. It's going to happen. Wait well. I wouldn't be crying and complaining through it so much. I would actually just learn how to wait well. And that's something that I've learned now being 30. You know, it's almost like this stream today is not for, I'm sorry for anybody who joined because this is for me specifically. Because <laughs> it's, it's validating either the journey I'm on recently or even the journey I've been on for the longest time because... <laughs> Waiting was something I've had to do over the last five, five, six years. There were so mm -hmm. many things I needed to click in place that didn't. And like, I wouldn't be doing the stuff that I'm doing now if it wasn't for those moments, right? Mm -hmm. Some of the most important moments in your life are the moments that you go through pain because mm -hmm. it gives you perspective. If everything worked at Ferrari speed, you wouldn't care about anybody else. You only slow down to think about other people when life has humbled you, when you've been humbled yourself. Mm -hmm. Now you understand it's not, I'm not, even like I'm smart, right? But it's yeah. it, there's sometimes where you're going to run up against walls, even mm -hmm. with your smartness. So yeah. it gives you grace. It gives you perspective. It gives you empathy. Yes. That you would never have without those experiences. You mm -hmm. know, go ahead. You learn so much in the valleys, you know, that is really where you learn what you're made out of. I don't care. I'd, ra I'd rather fall from two stories than a 20 story building. That's true. I would rather learn now, fail now and fail fast. I, so I used to hate the fell forward, fell fast, but it's true. Like true. really learn a lot in the failure, sit in it. Don't sulk. There's nothing to sulk about. That is life. It is not always going to work out. And I like, I have this saying that I say to my family a lot, life is not a movie, meaning there's not this perfy, happy, happy ending all the time. Sometimes it really freaking sucks. You got up there and you bombed it. Okay. And you were embarrassed. You wanted to run out of there. And there is so much to learn out of that. You will learn who, what you're made out of and who you are in those moments. And those are, those have been the most shaping moments of my life when I failed when I messed up, when it didn't work out the way that I wanted, I learned what I was made out of and who made me and who I was. So again, this is, this is really, really good. Um, what are the most, um, for, for those starting out newly in their journey, what are some of the things that you've seen that have helped you in your journey that you think if they kind of like lean on, could also help them. Okay, I said it earlier in the interview, but dreaming out loud. So what I mean when I say that is, say this is something that I think will help anybody. When you are at in a community space, it doesn't even mean networking exactly, but it could even mean that you are with your friends and your family, right? And you have an idea. 
we're always looking for vertical growth, like who can help us outside of our network and people who do not know us. But what about horizontal growth? There are people in our lives that are CPAs, they're strategists, they're customer service experts, they're founders, and we never seek the brother, sister, cousin, best friend because we're looking for the executive to see us. Dream out loud in those spaces. Talk about the dream that you don't fully have executed all the way. So for example, something that I say a lot, I have a vision for my life. I want to be a New York Times bestselling author. I want to be a bestselling um, host. I want to be best. I want to be, or I want to be a New York Times bestselling author. I want to be an award-winning host and I want to be an award-winning public speaker all over the world. I want to get paid to run my mouth and it will happen. It will happen. That is literally, if I could put it into short, I want to get paid to run my mouth and that is it. And sharing the goodness of God all throughout the world, right? And I know I'm, that- I'm I feeling that. <laughs> <laughs> and the thing is, I know it will happen because it is happening. I'm living in it. And it's happened mm -hmm. every time when I'm in spaces, I dream out loud. And somebody says, hey, we actually been looking for a woman to cover a segment on XYZ. Are you available Thursday? I am. <laughs> hey, I remember one time how I got on the news. Um, this was like, this is my first like uh, media TV approach. Kind of thing, and I was in this. I'm in this cohort. Also, I apply to things online. I literally look up what I want. Google is my friend. I literally will look up women events in Dallas. What is happening in Dallas? Th these kinds of things. What's happening remotely? That kind of stuff. And I'm in this cohort, Black Women in Nonprofit Leadership. And as I'm there, we have a, a a media expert on, and she's on the news, right? A local news that all the time, it's always airing. And she's like, any questions? Nobody has questions yet. So I say, hi, um, I have a question. What does somebody that does consulting on their own, what do they need to do to get on the news? She's like, well, what kind of consulting do you do? And I, I'm dreaming out loud, right? So I said, oh, uh, well, I do, at the time I was doing nonprofit consulting, startup, st strategist uh, for social impact consulting. And I tell her I'm doing that. And that I just want to get the message out that people can literally start purposeful businesses. And she goes, wow, um, I think it was National Nonprofit Day was coming up. She says, we need somebody. Do you want to do it? I certainly do. <laughs> Go ahead. Put me out there. And it was great. It was great for my business. It was great for me. And that's something that I get to say I done in my in my actual life add to my resume. Dream out loud. Don't be afraid for somebody to kill your dream. If it's that easy to kill your dream, then you need, you need, there's some other things we need to talk about. Mm, wow. And that's something that I talk about too, even on like my career advice um, to like people starting out in tech, like how important it is to share your journey. So everybody dreams like they, they want to write a press release when for example, they're now chief product officer of a startup or like this or that, but it's like, that's sometimes not as exciting as you sharing that journey. I just written my first line of code. Mm. Oh, right there on LinkedIn. Oh, you know, I was running up against this bug so many times today, only for me to realize that if only I'd done X, I could have fixed it. Yes, it actually, you just made me think of when you were talking about the uh, the code thing, something that happened, this is to my husband. I keep bringing him up because I just love him and he, his life has been so inspiring to me, so I don't care. So my husband, we were, he was in Silicon Valley and this is when he was transitioned. He's in, he's in an iron yard boot camp, a uh, coding boot camp, and he has absolutely no next step of how to become an, an iOS engineer. He has no next step. And he is junior as junior can be, right? He's in the, the belly of frustration and anger. And also excitement. And both, we live in a duality of a world, emotions, and that's something else I could talk about. But he's sitting there and he just pulls out his phone and he gets on LinkedIn and he starts talking about his journey. How it is something as you're navigating and you're trying to figure out the next step, like, don't give up, like, don't give up. And he's not going to give up. Like he's going to be an iOS engineer. It goes viral on LinkedIn and then different opportunities open up in his network. And then a few weeks later, he gets a job at a startup in Silicon Valley in San Francisco. Wow. Dream out loud. This whole idea. That's the second that word. 
That's the second word this week. Dream out loud. <laughs> Dream out loud. This whole idea, like, be for real. We hate, we, we as people cannot stand the know-it-all. Even in class, we couldn't stand the know-it-all. Every time the teacher asks questions, they're the first one. It's like, give somebody else a chance. <laughs> hey. But we actually put that on. We are the know-it-alls. We have to have this mask of having it together. We are perfect in all our answers. We know exactly what to do. We know exactly how it's supposed to happen. No, we actually don't. And if we're honest about it, we're figuring it out. And we need people to help us along the way. That is dreaming out loud. Mm. Well, um, we'll have our first audience question from Trey. I think you've answered this one before. Yeah. Um, maybe so. Maybe there's a different one you can think of, but it's like, what's the biggest mistake you've made in your career and how have you learned from it? Okay. Let me think if I have a good story. Okay. When I think about uh, my career, particularly, I see it as very unconventional, but just completely God's favor all over my career. It's been nothing but the kindness of people, hearts being moved towards me and seeing something that was beyond what a degree could do, right? Mm -hmm. And one of the biggest mistakes outside of, I wouldn't even say biggest mistakes, like ugh, we, we get too trivial with these things. Like it's not just one big thing. I think it's a heart posture to take. Mm -hmm. A mistake that is a heart posture that I have taken in the past, it's not just in patience, but it's also a lack of humility. You see what I'm saying? Like, you see your thing as this big, right? And it is that big. But lacking humility to say, okay, I, I feel like I'm this, but also, can I still learn? You know, it was when you asked about certificates and different things. Like, it was great at a certain early, early on, and it lasted just for a few weeks. But like, I already know what I need to know about that. I'm great at it. People tell me I'm amazing at it. I can, but... <laughs> Can you not learn more? <laughs> and when I begin to see the value in paying for conferences, paying to be at space in spaces, paying for whether it was a certificate or a coach or a conference, when I saw the value in that, I began to really see that that is humbling. It is so humbling to be in a room where you feel so small. You're so small. You feel like, oh my gosh, you guys like are doing a lot. It is humbling to be in those spaces. That is a heart posture to take in a career, but just in life. Walking in humility, that is something that as I learned it in my career later, I would have adopted that early on, right away. Uh, <clears throat> ask more questions, people, because we got uh, Jasmine for a few more minutes. But it's interesting you say that because one of the engineers that I really respect, he's uh, David Fowler, is actually I don't know if it's his role or something, but they actually call him a distinguished engineer at Microsoft. Um, he said something on Twitter one time that I could never forget. He said that um, when he was asked during his interview how great he was at C Sharp going into Microsoft, his confidence level was seven. Mm. Now, after I think it was more than 10 years <laughs> at the time, his confidence level is now four. <laughs> I love that though. I really love my kind of art. Like, you're like, you know what? I'm already here. I'm director. I'm executive already. It's like you just made it two months ago. Yes or no? Like, calm down. But when you get there, you really see like there's so much to learn. And if you're a forever student, you're going to always be good. And and I think I also read it in a book that was also interesting, which is something that I'm now acutely aware of. Because I think we've the interesting thing about you sharing that vulnerability was we, I think we've all been there. Mm -hmm. You're young, you have the world ahead of you, you're so ambitious. And I think in some cases you do have to be delusional, yeah. right? I was watching a video of Boston Rams where he was saying that, like, you have to believe in your own delusion that you're the greatest, yeah. you're the best. But balancing it out with some perspective, it's like potentially I'm the best. But um, whether it's like in my reality, so for example, I'm a YouTuber, maybe I still don't know how to speak in the most engaging way. Maybe my lighting setup isn't still the greatest. Because if you really think about it, there's some YouTubers who have a dedicated sound guy who do their sound design. Ooh, yeah, I don't. So regardless of what I think potentially my sound could sound like, 
I don't have a dedicated sound engineer who went to school for it. So it's probably not as great as that person. So potentially I can believe in my potential, but still be humble enough to understand where I'm at. And I think one, whenever you have, I've, I've seen it somewhere where somebody said like the most successful people are the most confident and at the same time, still the most insecure people at the same time. And, <laughs> and I will also add the most successful people are the most curious people. And curious people are often humble people because they, I have a friend, she is a double doctor, a surgeon. She is one of the smartest people ever. And also the most curious person. She will ask a question over and over in different ways as if it's her first time ever hearing about something. And I told her the other day, you are clothed in humility and walking in that humility, you lead with that humility. And as people, if we would really just honestly get curious about our subjects, our industries, ourselves, I see a question that says, where do you see yourself in 10 years? Hmm. I want to tell you who I see myself as. Hmm. All the details, girl, is, listen, I could give you all the details, okay? But I'm going to tell you who I see myself being. I see myself being a mother who absolutely adores her children, a wife that is beautifully serving her husband. And I see myself thriving in my career, absolutely thriving through communication, through storytelling, through strategy, building communities. I see myself being a community builder, a leader and a servant, a servant heart. I see myself absolutely being that kind of person, all the little details, roles, titles, income, all of that follows. You know, it's so interesting that you mentioned that piece because um, when I led a, a, a boot camp as a director of program management, one of um, the people I worked very closely was Ashley, our director of marketing and communications. And at that time, maybe even till now, she's probably the best writer I'd ever met. Mm -hmm. And then once she'd read something, whether it was a press release or something like that, she would send it. Then we were just two of us. So she would send it to me first before she sent it up to the board to go look at. And I used to sit there like, you mean you want me to read it? Why? Like, I, I don't think I could add anything of value to this because yeah. you're just so high up there. Yeah. But then later I started to reflect. It's like, how do you think she got as good as she did? Do you think she did that by being obnoxious and not validating that work? So she's built the culture of excellence by having our work challenged and refined. Ooh! So I'm like, wow. So she's not doing it because she's not good. She's doing it because she's good. And <laughs> it, there's the thing. It is the confidence to know where you are. I don't have to be afraid that it's going to affect me in spaces if somebody looks at my work twice because I'm asking for it because I'm that confident, but I'm also humble enough to recognize that I have areas to grow. It's a duality. It's like you, it's, is there ever a time in life where everything's perfect? You never have a bad day. And would at the end of the year, if you had a, like several bad days, but you had a, the best year of your life professionally, would you end the year and say you had the worst year of your life because you had a few bad days? No, you would probably still say you had a great year because two things are always happening at the same time. You're having a really great day, or also a few bad moments. You're having a really great week, well, also maybe a friend made you really angry. Mm. It's like two things are happening at the same time. When we even think of the pandemic, the pandemic was happening, something really sad and devastating, while some people were getting closer to their families than they ever have. Mm. Two things are happening at the same time. That is the life we live in. That is adulting. Wow. Thanks so much for the comment, Mr. Ace TV. Yeah, he says love that you honor your husband and family. Yeah, that's amazing. Uh -huh. uh, <laughs> and then uh, last question we got is from Brian because I think we're at time and I want to be respectful of everybody's time is what's your advice for people trying to make it in tech who don't have the privilege of a great support system around them? Look it up and pay for it. Okay, mm -hmm. those are two things. Look it up. Literally get on Google and look up communities, type in keywords that you want to be a part of. Look up 
you know, women in tech or women that are thriving, meetups, you know, the app meetup, but even going, finding, going through Facebook groups, looking up those tiny Facebook groups, you look it up, find it, be thirsty in uh, desiring it so deeply that you are desperate for it. And you will not, you are not satisfied until that thirst is fully quenched until you find that community. And the other part is pay for it. Because sometimes it's there. They are there, but they may have like a fee. Like, okay, well, we meet, uh, maybe it's a membership group. Maybe it is the conference, right? Maybe it is a community group, but you are willing to pay for it and what your, uh, whatever your means can provide. But you are not willing to look it up or pay for it. And also, if you are, pray for it. Pray that that community would be surrounded around you, that you would have that support system and God will send it. Um, that is so great. I will add one last one from my own personal journey right now. You could also build it. Oh, so it's, so, yes, it's, it's, build it. it's so interesting. Um, one of the things that I realized that I needed a lot in my YouTube journey this year was a community. Mm -hmm. And I know a friend, I think Mr. it was actually Mr. Ace who was um we've been we talk back and forth and give each other like this is working this isn't so i pulled him in put a couple of friends together now we have a community of like six people that we built and we're sharing advice and asking for suggestions and asking so it's like it may not be much it's not a thousand person community or a 600 person community or even a hundred people community but it doesn't matter you it's have people community who are on the same journey with you and are willing to grow with you and are willing to learn with you and not doing the same exact thing as you're doing and there's so much power in that. Let me say this last thing on the build it. I moved back to Dallas as an adult woman. I grew up here, but you know, mindsets are different. You don't want to always walk with the same people from back in the past because now you're in a different season of life and you're looking to have different friendships with a different kind of connection. And I'm fortunate that I do have a great support system here, but what I found as being a connector, right? And connecting with other people and other women specifically in Dallas who are adulting and want adult meaningful friendships was that it was hard to find. And I ran into this over and over. And I said, I'm sick of this. Where is there, is there like an event or a space that's not networking? I'm not talking about networking, but just where you can go find friends, where it is like not weird to go in and just talk to meet a friend. And then I said, I'm going to build it. Mm. I'm going to build that community. Mm. So March 8th here in Dallas on Women's International Day, we are having a friendship mixer. And it is called Women in Dallas. In the same way that you have your day ones, we say leave with a day two. And in the event, you are going to be able to walk out with a friend and cultivate a new friendship because these are curated connections for women in Dallas who desire meaningful adult friendships. And it is not weird at all because it's a friendship mixer. And I built that. So, or building it, I'm building it. So build it as well. Please share me the link. Uh, however people can register, I'll drop it in the, in the chat. Um, thank you so much, Jasmine. This has been amazing i wish we could go on and on and on um but you're great you're awesome you are doing amazing things i hope that you feel so inspired you have inspired me so much tonight thank you your joy your family is blessed just because you are in it thank you so much thank you so much jasmine and that's our stream for tonight again like share subscribe look forward to seeing you next week when we bring on another amazing guest who's going to be dropping a lot of gems oh you're awesome too mr a